on two wheels this week, Jeff meets a man who's in love with his Honda Valkyrie. And Wayne travels back to the NEC to hand over the keys to the lucky winner of the Men and Motors scooter. I chat with a biker who's been riding around Britain in aid of charity. But first, Wayne and I take a trip to the dirt bike show at Donington Park. Of course, no bike show would ever be complete without a display of stunt riding. And this is the trick wizard himself, Jason Finn, on his trials bike. And although the crowd were very, very impressed, Jason's assistant, Craig, seemed to have drawn the short straw. Now you can't visit a motorcycle show with at least introducing to you different types of fancy helmets. So I brought you here to this laser helmet stand for all sorts of different types and colours. Now if you're a road bike rider you will know that you can buy all the replicas you fancy, your Creville, your Doohan, your Kenny Roberts, Hager, with different brands from every different mate you can think of, your AGV, Shoei, RI, all of them do race replicas. But it isn't common to see a race replica in a motocross helmet, well now you can buy one. Because look what I've got here. For example, that Stefan Peter Hansel. He is definitely a very clever all round motorcyclist and does the Paris Dakar. So you can have one of his colour jobs. Stefan Everts. Everybody knows Stefan Everts. He's won the world title loads of times. Now you can even have a Gordon Crockard. And Gordon Crockard is the Irish lad who is taking the motocross world by storm. He's won the British Championship, the Irish Championship, and is in fact six in the world in the 250s. And you can buy his race replica colour. They're about £130 to buy the race replica, but you can buy a laser helmet for motocross use, just like the real thing, for around £69. So, good value for money. And if you fall off a lot, which I definitely do, you can even buy the bits and pieces. You can buy new peaks, no problem. You can buy the trimmings inside even, if you wreck them. And you can take them all out and wash them. So even if you've got a smelly head, the problem is resolved. Now then, talking about resolve, I do like to party and because laser helmet of Belgium we have Belgian beer, Belgian chocolates and I'm going to have a party. Bye bye. Now if you go to a football match these days many people tend to go wearing the shirt of their favourite team. You go and watch Man United and lots of people turn up in Man United shirts, you buy them from the souvenir shop. Well that kind of scenario is coming into biking a little bit now, especially Speedway because Speedway is going a bit been a bit show busy really hasn't it, a bit razzmatazz, got great TV coverage and the action's fast and furious and it's good to watch. Well now you can go perfectly dressed as your favourite Speedway star, in this case this is a, a replica Jason Crump kit, Jason of course rides for the Kingsland Knights and uh, you can buy this sort of thing from their souvenir shops, other people are doing it like the Oxford Cheetahs, you've got the Wolverhampton Wolves and you can as I say go in the colours of your favourite team. And look at this, even jackets now being made, the Pool Pirates. So, pretty much like the football scenario, you can now go dressed as your favourite Speedway star. In fact, that looks like my size. I think it is. So look at me balancing one of these, eh? Total balance. I lie, actually. And the reason I lie is because there is a third wheel here on the side, my bit on the side. Now, you might recognise this. This is a trials bike. Now, we've shown you trials on two wheels many a time before. And it's where these machines and able riders go up and down dale over rocks, through streams, by tree trunks, you name it. And of course the indoor arena trials with the world famous Dougie Lampkin. And he rides a bike just like this one. But this bit on the side here is a little different. Sidecar, sidecar trials. It's not the only sidecar motorcycle that exists of course. Because you've got your speedway, your grass track, motocross, road racing, you name it. But I have a passion for this because for many a year I've ridden one of these sidecar trials. I'm still practicing, I've still got a lot to learn, but one day I could become quite good. They're very, very simple, it's just a tubular framework. They're very strong, but they're relatively light, and the idea is so it can be manhandled over quite heavy terrain. There's nothing complicated about it. The passenger, he hangs out here, and he might move over here and do a bit of 
ballerina work and it's commonly crossed between a ballerina and a lemming if you want to be a passenger. The wheel's nice and light so it just bounces nicely over rocks and you might notice down here a disc brake and that's activated by a foot pedal in the sidecar. But the foot pedal isn't used by the passenger, me, it's used by the rider. And the idea of the rider using it is simply so he's got total control. It helps him turn left very, very tightly. It helps him when they're going downhill. And it also helps they're going along a long camber with the sidecar in the air. Maybe one day you'll ever get the chance to see one or even have a go in one. Because I know that there are a great bunch of lads who do sidecar trials. If ever you saw one and said, can I have a go, mister? I reckon he'll give you a go. All I need is a decent rider because I could, the passenger bit, I love doing. Hey, up, right. I said, all I Hello, need, boy. a decent rider. And you're yeah. definitely not one of them. <laughs> now, I know you find it a little bit unusual for us to show you a push bike on a motorcycle program, but there is a good reason for it. Now, first of all, the one that I'm here by is actually a BMX style push bike. Okay, so that is you've seen them on the shops everybody knows a BMX bike but this is a bit different let me show you this this is a cycle that is for trials push bike trials now that's a bit different it's a bit new isn't it we know of Dougie Lampkin don't we a world trials champion of many times the difference is with these there's no engine but the death thing about it is you guys out there can buy this sort of thing it isn't special now what better people to talk to is guys who are at the top world class guys we've got english lads british lads who ride at world level we've got ben and danny come over here fellas come over here world class trials guys on push bikes so how long have you been doing this cycle trials for about eight years about eight years yeah, starts when i was five flipping heck how about you about three to three and a half years have you but you're, you're up at the top, you're in the world scene now doing it. So you are stars, it's great to be touching a star and talking to stars. But you, is it because you, you, you want to go to motorcycles or is this where you want to stop? No, I'm going to stay on cycles. You're going to stay yeah. on cycles? No, not going to go to motorbikes. But I've seen you on motorcycle trials bikes and you're good at that as well. What, what's your preference? Um, I'd like to go back to the motorcycles because it's just improving technique all the time. Good practice. Now, just for the lads out there at home, young lads who've perhaps got a BMX at home or a mountain bike, common cycles, granted, it is unusual a trials bike. What's the differences like? Um, different frame dimensions and sometimes well, sharper brakes, more powerful brakes, and they're just lighter in general. Yeah. Now, without doubt, the world of biking is very much a family concern, and I think more so in the off-road world than the road bike scene. There's certainly more for the youngsters in the world of off-road machines. So if little boy or little girl wants to get involved in riding bikes, you might want to start them on something like this, a little 70cc Honda. Dead easy to ride, there's no clutch on it. It's got gears, but there's no clutch, so it's just rev and go. Twist it like a modern scooter, and away they go. Then when they get the buzz, perhaps get a little bit more competent, and they get that competitive edge, they can move up to something like this, an 80cc bike, but now we've got a clutch there. We've got gears, it's the same as a bike that the big boys ride, all the same configuration, that'll cost you about £2,300. Little 70, by the way, is about £1,350. Then, as young boy or young girl grows up, their legs get a bit longer. You move them up to the next stage, which is this 80cc again. It's the same bike, basically, but with big wheels now. So they're used to the power, they know what they're riding, but it's physically a bigger machine. Then they grow up, big teenagers, or even become parents. Of course, there's big motocross bikes like this one there in dad's size. Look at this, this is massive, this. There's a 250 version done, this is the 400 XR, and this is 4,400 quid. They even do a 650 version, it's huge. But if dad happens to be vertically challenged, such as moi, then there's even a bike to suit him, like this one. <laughs> and this one's 800 quid's worth. Ha, oh, mere loose change. In fact, I'll just go and empty my pockets. See you later. You know, there's some very smart stands here this year, big fancy stands with big coloured signs and bright lights, all meant to catch your attention, but look at this. This has definitely won the top prize for attention grabbing this year. This is an RSR fully breathable waterproof suit. 
which is quite unusual in the Enduro world because Enduro stuff generally isn't waterproof, but this is 270 quid's worth, all British made, made in Yorkshire. A nice display, you sell a few of them in the car park today actually. Well, there'll be more from the Dirt Bike Show on Two Wheels next week. Coming up next after the break, Jeff meets a man who's in love with his Honda Valkyrie. I meet a biker who's travelled around Britain for charity and Wayne returns to the NEC to give away a scooter. Now, over the past few weeks, we've been featuring gold wings and the gold wing culture and all the rest of it. But one thing we haven't featured is a gold wing of a sort, and that's the Valkyrie. And this guy here, Bill Rowlands, he's the proud owner of this one. And just look at it here, glinting in the sun. And that's just Bill, isn't it, Bill? <laughs> but Bill, tell me, you came from the gold wing um, culture, didn't you? You had a gold wing before this? Yeah, I had a gold wing before this. Four and a half years with a gold wing. And, and you loved it, and you were well I into the lifestyle. It. And well into it, yes. Yeah, and so. What caused the big change then? Well, I seen this out one day by the previous owner, and I liked the look of it and the sound of it. And a week later, approximately in their shop, I seen the bike. Sorry, and there it is again, yeah. I fell in love with it, and I had to have that bike, yeah. and I've still got the bike. <laughs> what was it that actually, uh, was it just the sort of rugged looks of it? Because I, I know you mentioned the sound, but I want to come to that in a while. But I mean, yeah. you just like the different looks, did you? But I like the different looks, I like the whole style of the bike. It, yeah. it, it looked my type of machine. But you were yes. still keen on the big flat six, you got used to that. I love the smoothness wing. of the flat six, yeah. there's nothing like the power. And so you thought, that'll yeah. do me. That, yep. Now, that'll what about me. all these accessories? Because I know the F6C is its proper name as it comes. It hasn't got this the fairing on it, has it? And it no. hasn't got those Corbin panniers yeah, on it. So right. those, did you put those on or did you buy it like this? No, I bought it like this off the right. previous owner. Yeah. This was how I, I seen the machine and how I bought That's, it. Yeah. Yep. And you got the lights on it as well. So Everything's on it, yes. And all this chroming as well is fantastic. Yep. But tell me, I can see those pipes down there, which I know for a fact aren't standard, and uh, th those appeal to you as well, don't they? Much so, yes. <laughs> let, let, let's have a quick listen. I shall. Well, that's an absolutely fantastic sound. I'll tell you what it reminds me of, of a Porsche, you know, flat six engine, howling away. Mm. Is that what it reminds you of? Um, on revs it does, yes, but yeah. on tick over it's got the sound of a Chevy. What, like a big V8? Yeah. Just burbling away? Yeah. What have the neighbours got to say about that? I have no problem with the neighbours at really? all, but the young lads and, and the young girls around where I live, they, they love the bike. Oh, yep. <laughs> and certainly, are they encouraging you to sort of wind it on a little they bit? They do a bit, yeah. yeah. I bet they do. Yeah. So, underneath then, like all bikers, you're still a bit of a hooligan, are you? Uh, yeah, it brings the hooligan out in you a little bit, yeah. Well, you mind, there you go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, this might confuse you because we've come back to the NEC, not for another bike show, but for a very special reason, because just think of all the competitions in all the magazines and all the websites, all the biking competitions. You don't bother entering them. Nobody really wins. Maybe the prize doesn't even properly exist. Well, I've got news for you, because we ran a competition on the Men & Motors website to win a Kimco Cobra scooter. The man who's won it is a guy called Ian Wood. He's from Wales, and Wayne is with him inside. Well, congratulations, Ian, eh? The proud winner of this little scoot. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you know, there was actually near on 10,000 people entered this competition. And you were, what, so how did you get to find out you'd won it? Um, I had a phone call of a phone call to Yeah. And uh, I couldn't believe it, first of all. I just thought it was somebody taking the mic. Did you? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realise So you thought it was a mate ringing up, a friend ringing up and saying, go out, get lost. Yeah, yeah. I didn't believe him. Great. And is it what you 
Is it what you want, what you need? Have you got a motorcycle? No, I haven't got a motorcycle at all. I'm, um, what I did was enter the competition because I was sick to death of being stuck in traffic every day. In a car, and um, about a 10 mile journey every day, and there was lots of scooters going past me all the time. Right, so you genuinely needed one. It wasn't a case of we're going to enter that competition, win it and vlog it. You, you genuinely nope, want I one. Really, and, really want one. And you will use it. Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Have you got a motorcycle licence? Not as yet, but... No, so you need to do the training. But nonetheless, that's easy done. I will do. Get your little license and away you go. Yep. You drive a car now then? Yep. That's when you were sat in the traffic and saw the people passing by. Lots of them, yeah. Brilliant. And well, you'll find this very easy and, and simple to use. Um, when you got to work then, how far are you travelling? It's about 10 miles. Ah, well that's not so bad. You no, don't need a, some waterproofs, mate. It's very slow. Yeah. Whereabouts do you live? In Cardiff. Cardiff. Yep. So as long as you, you, you make sure you don't go the wrong direction, because if you go the wrong way, you get wet. Yep. If you go up, and I tell you what, this will be fine for running around the hills and having a bit of a ride out. Good sir. Uh, have you, are you a family man? Yeah, I am. Yeah, so yeah. have you got a, a little one? A little daughter, yep. Uh, how, old she, how old is she? <laughs> 11 months. Ah, well you won't be able to take her on then. Oh, Unless yeah. we put a top box on, and then you can stick it in the top box. Oh, I like do. <laughs> <laughs> you will need a bit of gear, including... I know, I know I said I wouldn't go there, but you will need a crash helmet. The one you've got on at the moment is not being safe for it. You shouldn't have said that really, should you? So right then, we are the proud owner, and I have got to pass over these guys. It's killing me to do this, because I've had a lot of fun on this. Do you know, I'm not the only person to actually have ridden this machine. All right. Paul's been on it, I've been on it, and would you believe some people who are not quite as famous as I am, or Paul, and that's Johnny Herbert, and uh, that other fellow who drives them Jaguar racing cars. Uh, um, I think he's Eddie Irvine. They're not very famous, <laughs> uh, but we've been on it, so uh, I hope you have as much enjoyment as we've had. Thank, thank you very much. See you later. Cheers. Now I save all the best jobs on two wheels for myself, because I'm not stupid, you know, and today, of course, it's too wet to be riding the bike, so we're going to the pub for a nice, quiet drink. In fact, I've come here to the Sherwood in Preston to meet a biker who's been doing his bit for charity. This is the bike he's used, a Honda Fireblade, and he's called Keith Sumner. So let's go and say hello. And here he is enjoying a nice, quiet, relaxing pint in his local. Um, Keith, you must be enjoying that pint now after what you've done. You did a massive charity run. Just t tell me briefly what you did. OK, basically, Paul, what we did, um, we set off from Preston, which is my hometown, um, went down to uh, Land's End and up to John Lee Roats, right. um, back down to some old Preston. So around around Britain? Pretty much around Britain, yeah. Only on A roads? Only on A roads. Right. You weren't allowed to. Was that your own rule? That was my own rule. Right. Own rule. OK, so whatever possessed you to do such a thing? Um, well, basically, a friend of mine um, contracted meningitis in March, uh, a couple of days before my birthday, and um, within three, four days, it became apparent to us that uh, Paul was going to die from meningitis. It okay. uh, attacked his brain, it attacked his spinal column, and he couldn't see. He was quadriplegic, and um, I wanted to do something to help. Mm -hmm. um, was he a biker, Paul? No, he wasn't. He was right. actually a dress designer. Really? Very, right. very macho. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> very macho, yeah. I think he'd have done something better with my leathers. Right, so he, was, he wasn't a biker, but you wanted to use your interests to, to what? To yeah, I mean, I love motorbikes. I mean, I, I've got about four or five bikes myself. Right. My missus rides, my uh, stepson rides, my son's learning to ride. We all ride bikes. Right. I've ridden from being 16. Um, so you went to raise some money for, for what? For, for, for Meningitis Research Foundation. Right. Um, I didn't even know if there was a charity in Britain uh, when, when I decided to do the ride. I just got on the internet and found out that there was uh, a charity based in Bristol, as okay. it happens. Um, phoned them up and said, look, you know... Um, I want to raise you I, I a want, few I want, raise, I want to raise some money. Yeah. Uh, and I fancy doing this ride. And uh, they gave me one or two pointers. So. At the moment, it's raised sort of £2,660-ish. Right. Uh, money's still coming in. At the end of the day, we'll probably end up nearish £3,000, something right. like that. You know, that's not bad so. for a week's work, because that's what it took you. Is it eight days you did it? Yeah, eight days. <laughs> when you set off from here, though, when you left here, yeah. you left with your mates. And Now, that's all right, riding with your mates, because you're, yeah. you're in a gang and, you, you know, it's good fun. Yeah. You can see each other in your mirrors and everything. But then they left you at Shrewsbury, I think, yeah. didn't they? And you continued to Gloucester on your first night that's right. with, with one lad. Yeah. But after that, it gets a bit lonely. Yeah, I mean, it would be very lonely, especially when you don't. I mean, because you didn't book digs, did you? No, it was all nothing on the fly. Was, nothing was pre booked. The only thing I knew uh, with any certainty was where I was going to aim for each day. Right. And what I tried to do was overshoot the target every day. And right. the only day we didn't do that was day one. Uh -huh. And that was 
we only did 170 miles. It should have been around about 220, but we found a B road uh -huh. quite by accident. And wallop, it, it knocked off quite a lot of miles. Just, just backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Preston, Gloucester, Lands End. Then mm. across towards London. Yeah, well, I was supposed to stay in Land's End on the Sunday night, but I got to Land's End for about quarter past two in the afternoon. Right. And Land's End, it's you know, a few hotels, and, that, and that's it. So It's just a signpost, isn't it, saying yeah. France? France uh, is that way. Yeah, and that's about Cornish it. pasty, three pounds, please, you know. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, didn't have a wheelbarrow at cash. I must ask you, because I, I, I've ridden through London yeah. a couple of times. It's a nightmare. It can take you ages to get through London. It was. Uh, Did you go through London City? Yeah, I actually went in through um, through Heathrow and Hammersmith, um, and then through Sloan Square. That part is extremely of, busy. Incredibly so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm and on the Monte a, Carlo Rally, isn't it, London? It was uh, Russian roulette, really. Is it, you know? yeah. yeah, with the dispatch riders. I mean, all oh, right. Yeah. You Did not have any altercations with dispatch riders, no. No, they were very friendly. Like, really? you know, yeah, it was quite funny because I mean, they could see I was on a bike with a lot of luggage and camera straps on top of the bike, which. Yeah which I thought was getting some wonderful on-bike footage of the London traffic, but uh, didn't. But didn't right, got a okay. great audio track of it, you know, <laughs> can hear me talking to the camera sort of thing. Well, we'll leave Keith battling with the London traffic and we'll catch up with part two of his journey next week. Also on next week's show, there'll be more from the Dirt Bike Show at Donington Park. And Jeff and I indulge ourselves as we look back at some of the top bikes of the 1990s.